In this video, we are going to graph this trigonometric transformation shown here in the blue rectangle. And as always, we're going to use the red equation to help us. And we're also going to use the unit circle. Quickly with the unit circle, it's important to recognize, folks, that the x in this blue rectangle refers to the input angle. This x here refers to the x-coordinate of the point that it intersects with on the unit circle. Oftentimes, this can be very confusing to students. So when you see x here, we're referring to the input angle. For example, if we were to look at the input angle of 30 degrees down here, that would have an x-coordinate of the square root of 3 over 2 and a y-coordinate of 1 half. This x-coordinate, square root of 3 over 2, has nothing to do with x equals 30, which is the input angle. OK, before we go ahead and graph this transformation in the blue rectangle, let's review the intuition of both the tangent and cotangent graphs. The first thing you want to know about both tangent and cotangent, recall they are reciprocal functions as well as co-functions, is that the period is pi as opposed to sine and cosine and their respective reciprocals and co-functions would have periods of 2 pi. So you can see this entire cycle is completed for tangent starting at negative pi over 2, that's the first vertical asymptote ending at positive pi over 2, the second vertical asymptote. So this entire distance is pi. If you move over here to the right to cotangent, the first vertical asymptote is at y equals 0, excuse me, x equals 0, and the second vertical asymptote is at x equals pi. Notice, tangent of x, half of the period is to the left of the y-axis, half of the period is to the right of the y-axis, and the tangent function is an increasing function, Me meaning as we move left to right, this graph goes upwards. Here, the cotangent, the entire period is located to the right of the y-axis, and the cotangent function is a decreasing function. Again, as we move from left to right, this graph decreases. Let's quickly look at the graphing calculator to confirm what we just reviewed. Okay, so which function are we looking at here? We have a decreasing function. We have the first vertical asymptote at x equals 0, the second at x equals pi. This is the cotangent function. Next, if we look at the tangent function, again, it's an increasing function, and half the period is to the right of the y-axis, half the period is to the left of the y-axis. Moving back to the schematic drawing, folks, I want you to notice something very important. At the tangent function here, again, half the period occurs before the y-axis, half the period afterwards. You see these points right here? They are very important. This rep represents one-fourth of a period. This is half the period. This is three-fourths the period. These three points are crucial in drawing these graphs of the transformed function. It turns out that at one-quarter period and three-quarter period, you are going to have a y value that corresponds to the middle of the graph plus its amplitude. This is the middle of the graph, y equals 0. There is no vertical shift because this d value is 0. Here I've rewritten these functions with expanded hidden ones and zeros included. Because there is no vertical shift, this is the middle of this graph. And the middle of the graph here will correspond to the midpoint of the period. The midpoint of the period for tangent is going to be at x equals 0. 
the midpoint for the period of cotangent is going to be at x equals pi over 2. Both of those points are on the midline of the graph. Now, let's look at the quarter points. Quarter period here is shown to be 1. That is because the amplitude of this function is 1. So what you do is you take the middle value. In this case, that's going to be x equals 0. You add the amplitude. In this case, it's plus 1. And you subtract minus 1. Whatever value this is, these values are going to correspond to the 1 quarter period mark. Now, depending on whether the function is increasing, like with the tangent, or decreasing, like with the cotangent, you will place these values. So here, at 1 quarter period, the y value is going to be the middle, which is 0, plus or minus the amplitude. The amplitude of this function is 1, the a value. Because this is an increasing function, we're going to put the negative 1 here and the positive 1 here, so we get an increasing function. Conversely, with the cotangent function, the y value that corresponds to the 1 fourth period here is going to be at positive 1, and the point that corresponds with 3 fourths of a period here is going to be at negative 1, and that is because this is a decreasing function. So folks, we will use this concept as we graph this trigonometric transformation. But here, we're going to have a vertical shift, and we have an amplitude of 2. So we are going to strategically use these values to find the quarter points. Now that we have the intuition between the tangent and cotangent parent functions, let's go ahead and graph this transformation. We're going to use this red equation to determine that our amplitude equals 2. That means when we take into account the vertical shift, which is plus 1, the line y equals positive 1 is going to be the middle of our graph. We are now going to use the amplitude, both in the positive direction and the negative direction, to determine the points that will correspond to the 1 quarter of a period. So if we do 1 plus 2, this is going to be positive 3. That is going to be one of the quarter points. In other words, one of the points that correspond to the 1 fourth period mark. And if we do minus 2, this is going to be a negative 1. So these points here are going to correspond to 1 fourth of the period and 3 fourths of the period. Now, which is going to be which? This is a cotangent function, meaning it's decreasing. The parent is decreasing. There's no negative here, which would flip it and cause it to be an increasing function. So if we have a decreasing function, then we know at the one quarter period mark, okay, at the one quarter period mark versus the three quarter period mark, if we consider this the midline, we know, because it's a decreasing function, that this point has to be higher. So if this is going to be our point that corresponds to the 1 fourth period, and down here is going to correspond to the 3 fourths period. Okay, now that we have our amplitude, which is 2, and by the way, technically, tangent and cotangent don't have amplitudes because the graphs rise and, and uh, decrease along their asymp vertical asymptotes. But we use that amplitude to find these quarter point and three quarter point. So here we're going to call this quote unquote amplitude equal to two. Our vertical shift is positive one and we determined what's going to correspond to one fourth of a period and what's going to correspond to three fourths of a period with respect to the y value. So let's go ahead and find our period of this transformed function. Recall that the period 
is going to equal the period of the parent function divided by the absolute value of b. So here we're going to have pi divided by 1 or pi. That Next let's find the starting point and the ending point. The starting point of the parent function with cotangent is at x equals 0. So we're going to take what's in the parentheses and set that equal to x equals 0. That is the location of the first vertical asymptote for cotangent. When we do that, we get x equals negative pi over 2 for this particular transformed function. That represents our starting point, and by definition, that's going to be our first vertical asymptote. Okay, so start, first vertical asymptote. Now, to find the ending, the end is going to equal the start plus the period of this transformed function. So that's going to equal negative pi over 2 plus the period of this function that we're working with, which happens to match that of the parent function because our b value, recall, is 1 over here. So when we add the period of this transformed function, which is pi, we have negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2, which means it's going to end at positive pi over 2. So this is going to be our ending point. Folks, we now have everything we need to build our graph. Here is a review of the data that we have accumulated thus far. And armed with this data, we can now go ahead and graph this trigonometric transformation. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and draw the middle of the graph. Recall the middle of the parent function, cotangent, is here along the x-axis at y equals 0. But because of this vertical shift of positive 1, indicated by that d value, our new middle is going to be at y equals positive 1. Now folks, this is not a horizontal asymptote. It is the middle of our graph. Okay, so it's not a horizontal asymptote. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and mark our starting point, which is going to be at negative pi over 2, and our ending point, which is positive pi over 2. And recall, folks, that these are vertical asymptotes. So this is our first vertical asymptote, and that is our second vertical asymptote. Next, we want to determine what the quarter periods are along this x-axis. There's a couple ways to do that. We could take the quarter period here and go ahead and add it, add it again, and add it a third time. Or we could simply break this up using the average technique. So to find the middle, what we would do is add negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2 and then divide that by 2. In other words, we would get the average of the starting point and ending point of the segment that you are trying to bisect. So here, this would be 0 over 2, and that would give us a middle point of x equals 0. So now we're going to apply the same technique to get the quarter periods between negative pi over 2 and 0, and then between 0 and positive pi over 2. So here, we're going to take negative pi over 2 and add that to 0, and then divide by 2. So we are taking the average of this point and this point to determine the middle of this line segment. And when we do that, we get negative pi over 2 divided by 2, which is the same thing as saying negative pi over 2 times 1 over 2, keep change flip, and we get negative pi over 4. So this right here, folks, is going to be negative pi over 4. That is one quarter of a period, very important landmark. Next, we're going to find the average of these two 
in a similar fashion and we're going to get that this midpoint which corresponds to the three-quarter period part is going to be positive pi over 4. Okay, now we're going to use those special points that we determined by using the middle of the graph and the amplitude. And those points are right here in white. So recall, because this is a decreasing function, we know that the first quarter period has to be higher. So we're going to come to the one quarter period mark, which is negative pi over 4, and that's going to correspond to a y value of positive 3. So we're going to have a point right there. We are also going to have a point corresponding to the third three-fourths of a period point that's going to be y equals negative 1. That's going to be down here. One-fourth period point is going to be y equals positive 3. That's right here. So this is going to correspond to that point right there. And then the three-quarter period mark is going to correspond to y equals negative 1. And don't forget, we determine that by taking the middle of the graph, which is y equals positive 1, and both adding the amplitude, which is 2, and then subtracting the amplitude. That gives us positive 3 and negative 1, respectively. Now, the middle of the period, the midpoint of the period is at x equals 0. That corresponds to the middle of the graph. So here are the three points that we need to graph this transformation. And three points is all we need because we have the guidance of the vertical asymptotes on either side. So again, one-fourth of a period in corresponds to positive 3. That is the middle of the graph, y equals positive 1, plus the amplitude of 2. The middle of our graph corresponds to the middle of the function, which is y equals positive 1. Why is the middle of that function positive 1? Because right here, that d value is positive 1. Next, at 3 fourths of a period, we're going to correspond to y equals negative 1. That's going to be the middle of the graph minus the amplitude of 2. Now, folks, all we need to do is connect these points and we have our cotangent graph. Don't forget, it's a decreasing function that's going to follow the asymptotes on either side. Let's now consider the transformation of this tangent function. And let's first look at the intuition. We see this as a negative in front of the A coefficient. That means instead of increasing like the normal tangent function does, this transformed function is going to be decreasing. Next thing I notice is that the b value in front of the x is a fraction. Therefore, this is going to be a slower function. It's going to take longer for it to complete one period. Therefore, I know intuitively that the period is going to be longer than the normal pi of the parent function. We'll do the math on determining the period in a moment. The next thing I like to do is establish the middle of the graph by considering the vertical shift. So normally, the tangent will be at the x-axis, which corresponds to y equals 0. This graph is going to be vertically shifted up by this d value to positive 3. Next, I take the absolute value of the a value and I both add it and I subtract it from the middle of the graph. That is our amplitude. When I add it, I get plus 5 up here. And when I subtract, I get positive 1 down here. Folks, these two y values will correspond to the 1 fourth period and 3 fourth period mark. Now, determining which is which is going to be predicated on whether it's an increasing or decreasing function. So if we draw out the periods, 
If this is the start, this is one fourth of the period. Here's the middle. Here's three fourths. The fact that this is decreasing means we're going to have a function that looks like this. That means the one fourth spot has to be higher than the three fourth spot. That means that the one fourth position is going to be positive five, and the three fourths position is going to be positive one. Now that we have that, let's quickly find our period. Recall that the period of this transformed function is going to be the period of the parent function divided by the absolute value of b. That's going to be 1 fourth, and that means the period is going to be 4 pi. We're going to find the starting point of the graph. The starting point of the graph is found by taking what's in the parentheses, in this case 1 fourth x minus pi and setting that equal to the starting point of the parental function which is going to be negative pi over 2. So we're going to have negative pi over 2 plus pi which is the same as negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 or pi over 2. So we have x over 4 equals pi over 2. We'll cross multiply we get 2x equals 4 pi and x is going to equal 2 pi. So folks, that is our starting point, and it's also the first vertical asymptote. To get the second point, uh, excuse me, to get the ending point, or the second vertical asymptote, you take the starting point, and you add the period of this transformed function. So the ending point is going to be starting point which is 2 pi plus the period which is 4 pi and that's going to be at 6 pi. We now have everything we need to draw our graph. We know that most of the action is going to take place way out here on the x-axis so let's give more room on the right side than we do on the left. First thing I like to do is draw the middle of the graph. Remember this is not the horizontal asymptote. This is the middle of the graph and this is going to be at y equals positive 3 and that's due to the fact that the normal location for the middle of the tangent has been elevated, shifted vertically as a result of that d value being positive 3. Next we're going to go ahead and mark our beginning point which is going to be at 2 pi located in this location. That's going to be our first vertical asymptote. And our second vertical asymptote is going to be here at 6 pi. And a quick confirmation, 6 pi minus 2 pi is 4 pi, and that is indeed our period. What I like to do next is to go ahead and divide this period into four segments. First, the midpoint. The midpoint can be found by taking the average of 6 pi and 2 pi. 8 pi over 2 is going to be 4 pi. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide each of those segments to get 1 fourth of a period. 4 pi plus 2 pi is 6 pi divided by 2 is 3 pi. 4 pi plus 6 pi is 10 pi divided by 2 is 5 pi. Again. To find the midpoint, you take the average of the start and the end of the segment you are looking at. Okay, what, I, what do we know? We always know that for a tangent or a cotangent function, the point that corresponds to the mid period will be on the middle of the graph. So 4 pi on the x-axis is going to correspond to positive 3 on the y-axis. Okay, so that's positive 3 on the y-axis. Next, we're going to determine what's going on at the 1 4th period and the 3 4th period. Since this is a decreasing function, we determined earlier that we're going to go up 2 to get to positive 5 for the 1 4th period point. So here's 1 4th of a period. Here's 5. They're going to meet right here. Next, we look at the 3 4th period mark, 
We determined earlier that that's going to be at positive 1. Right here. And folks, this is your graph. You connect all these points. And then you follow the asymptotes on either side. Let's now graph this transformation of the tangent function. And looking at it quickly, we see that there's a positive coefficient in front of tangent. That means this is going to be an increasing function. Our vertical shift is going to equal positive 1, and our amplitude is going to equal positive 3. So the first thing I want to do is, if this is the middle of the graph, y equals positive 1, because we've been shifted up 1, because the d value is plus 1, I'm going to go ahead and add my amplitude to get to plus 4, and then I'm going to subtract the amplitude. 1 minus 3 is going to be negative 2, and these are the points that are going to correspond to our 1 fourth of a period mark and our 3 fourths of a period mark. Now, because this is a increasing function, meaning it's going to look something like this, the point that corresponds to the 1 fourth period mark has to be lower on the y-axis. Therefore, this is going to be our 1 fourth period, and therefore, by definition, this will be the mark for 3 fourths of a period. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down over here. We have 1 fourth of a period is going to be corresponding to negative 2, and 3 quarter period is going to correspond to positive 4. Okay, let's now proceed to find our period of this transformed function. To do that, we're going to take the b value and place that in the denominator, the absolute value thereof, underneath the period of the parent function, which is pi. So in this case, we're going to have pi over 1 half or 2 pi. Next, we're going to find our starting and end point. The starting point corresponds to the first vertical asymptote. To get that, we're going to take what's in the parentheses. And we're going to set that equal to the starting point of the parent function. Recall the tangent function starts at negative pi over 2. That is its first vertical asymptote. So we're going to get x over 2 equals negative pi over 2, pi over 2, plus pi over 2, which means x equals 0. So our first vertical asymptote, otherwise known as the starting point, is going to be at x equals 0. To get the ending point, we're going to take the start of this transformed function, which is x equals 0. Okay, so the end is going to equal the start plus the period. And again, we're talking about the transformed function. So that's going to be 0 plus 2 pi or 2 pi. So our second vertical asymptote, also known as our ending point, is going to be the input angle of x equals 2 pi. Okay, folks, we have now what we need to draw our graph. First thing I like to do is set up the middle of the graph. The middle of the graph we will find by using the vertical shift. Normally, the middle of the graph for tangent is the line y equals 0, otherwise known as the x-axis, because our vertical shift is plus 1 on the basis of this d value being plus 1, we're going to elevate our graph to this location. This is the line y equals plus 1. This is not a horizontal asymptote. Next thing I'm going to do is establish our beginning and end point. We found that our first vertical asymptote is going to be here at x equals 0. Our second asymptote, also known as our ending point, 
is going to be here at x equals 2 pi. We quickly separate this into four segments. The middle between 0 and 2 pi is going to be pi, and this is going to be pi over 2, and this is going to be 3 pi over 2. Okay, we found that by, you add pi plus 0 and divide by 2, you get pi over 2. You add pi to 2 pi, you get 3 pi, divide that by 2. In other words, you take the average between the beginning and the end of the segment that you are trying to bisect. We know that this is one-fourth of a period. This is half a period. At half a period, the graph is going to cross the middle, which is raised to positive 1. So that point corresponds to the mid portion of the period on the x-axis, corresponds to the middle of the graph. Second point, one-fourth of a period. We determine that this is an increasing function. Therefore, one-fourth of a period is going to correspond to negative 2 on the y-axis. That's our second point. Here, three-fourths of a period in, we are going to be at positive 4. Okay, again, three-fourths of a period here corresponds to positive 4 on the y-axis. We determine that by finding the middle of the graph and adding the amplitude. Remember the amplitude is plus 3 on the basis of that A value. So we went to middle of the graph, we went up 3, and we went down 3. That gives us, that gives us the points that correspond to the 1 fourth of a period and 3 fourths of a period. Therefore, here is our graph. Folks, in this next example, we have two negatives. So how does this affect whether the function is going to be increasing or decreasing? To answer that question, let's look at the fact that tangent is an odd function. Recall, all of the trigonometric functions are odd, except for cosine and secant. They are even. So if a function is odd, then we know by definition, if we look at f of negative x, it's going to equal the opposite of f of x. So if we have tangent of x as an increasing function, and we know that negative tangent of x is decreasing, We also know that because tangent is an odd function, we know that tangent of negative x is going to be the opposite of tangent of x. So if we have negative tangent of negative x, that means we have negative 1 times this right here. Or positive tangent of x. Which means we expect these two negatives to render the tangent of x, excuse me, and therefore be an increasing function just like the parent. So let's go back and look at this transformation and see if our prediction is correct. Okay. As always, first thing we want to establish is that the middle of this graph is going to be at y equals negative 4. How do we know that? Because that's the d value. So if our middle is at y equals negative 4. The next thing we do is look at the absolute value of the amplitude. Our a value is negative 3. The absolute value of that is positive 3. So we're going to go that distance in both directions. If we start at the middle and we go up 3, that puts us at negative 1. 
we start at negative 4 and go down, we're going to be at negative 7. So these are our <coughs> 1 quarter and 3 quarter points. Now, which is going to be which? We determine that these two negatives make this similar to the parent function, namely an increasing function. So if we have an increasing function, folks, it's going to look something like this. That means the point that corresponds to the quarter period is going to be lower. Therefore, we're going to assign this negative 7 to the 1 quarter mark. Therefore, this negative 1 is going to be assigned to the 3 quarter point. Next thing we want to do is figure out the period of this transformed function. Recall, to do that, we use the b value. Here the b value is negative 1 half. So we're going to have the normal period of the tangent function divided by the absolute value of the b value. So that's going to be pi divided by 1 half or 2 pi. And folks, that makes sense, because the fact that there's a 1 half in front of this x means that this tangent function is traveling half as fast as a normal function. The normal tangent function completes a cycle in pi, therefore this being half as fast is going to take twice as long, and the period is going to be 2 pi. The next thing we want to do is find the starting point. To do that, we take the normal starting point and set that equal to what is in the parentheses. Recall the normal starting point for tangent is negative pi over 2. That's the location of its first vertical asymptote. So we're going to have negative x over 2 is going to equal pi over 2. If we cross multiply, we're going to get 2 pi equals negative 2x, and pi x is going to equal negative pi. So that is our starting point, and our first vertical asymptote. To find our ending point, we take the starting point of this transformed function, and we add the period of this transformed function, and we get pi. So this is our starting point. Here's our ending point. And they are both going to be the first and second vertical asymptote, respectively. OK, folks, let's go ahead and graph this now. Just looking at the intuition of how to set up our graph, it looks to me like the y values, here's our middle, negative 4, our y values, negative 1, negative 7. This graph has a negative y value skew to it. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to make more of my graph reveal the negative y axis. First thing I like to do is draw the middle of the graph. Remember, this is not a horizontal asymptote. So if we make this is our middle, that's at y equals negative 4. Remember, we got that because our d value here is negative 4. Next thing I want to do is I want to graph my vertical and horizontal asymptotes. I'm sorry, my two vertical asymptotes. And they are located here. These are true asymptotes. We want to find our midpoint. To find the midpoint of any segment, we add the beginning and end and divide by 2. In other words, we take the average. Negative pi plus pi is 0. Divided by 2 gives us 0. To get the midpoint of this segment, we add these two and divide by 2. We get negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, folks, the middle portion of this graph is going to correspond to the middle 
value of the graph on the y-axis. Therefore, the middle of our period is zero. It's going to be right on the middle of our graph. That's our first point. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the one-fourth period. That's going to be at negative pi over 2. That's going to be at negative 7. That's going to be somewhere down here. So this is going to be negative 7. And these two points are going to correspond. Next, we're going to the 3 fourth period point, And that's going to correspond to y equals negative 1, which is here. And folks, this is our graph. Now, if you're not sure about this, these two negatives resulting in a rising function similar to the parent function of tangent, what you would do is you would take this quarter point, in other words, the x value at one-fourth of the period, and you would plug that into the function and see what your y value so let's go ahead and do that. So here's our function again. We want to know what the y value is when our x value is at the negative pi over 2, which is one-fourth of the period. Okay, so we're just plugging that in for x. Doing that, we're going to have pi over 2, I'm sorry, pi over 4. Let me make that meter, sorry. We're going to have positive pi over 4 minus pi, which is 4 pi over 4, minus 4, negative 3 tangent of negative 3 pi over 4 minus 4. Now, let's find this value. Go to our unit circle. And we look at where negative 3 fourths pi would be. The fact that it's negative means we're going to go clockwise. Folks, again, if you're not sure what's clockwise and what's counterclockwise, don't hesitate to do this. Draw a clock. You start here at the 3 o'clock position. If we're going to go clockwise, we know it's going to go this way. If we were to go all the way here, this would be negative pi or negative four-fourths pi, we're going to be one-fourth pi short of that. So we're going to be right here. This is negative three pi over four. So what is our, I'm sorry, what is the tangent of this angle? It's going to be minus square root of two over two here, minus square root of 2 over 2 here. Sine over cosine is going to be this value over that value, and that's going to be positive 1. So now we have negative 3 times positive 1 minus 4. Negative 3 minus 4 equals negative 7. So that is exactly what we predicted to match the 1 fourth period namely negative 7. Folks, let's just take a quick look at the graph. I graph this on Desmos. And when I use Desmos, here's our function right here. I'd like to go ahead and plot the vertical lines, x equals negative pi and x equals pi. That corresponds to our first and second vertical asymptote, respectively. I'd also like to plot the middle of the graph, y equals negative 4. So what do we have here? Indeed, we have our two vertical asymptotes where we predicted at the one-fourth period mark. Okay, here's your entire period. From negative pi to pi, it is 2 pi, and that makes sense. Again, this graph is going to traveling half as fast. It's going to take twice as long as the parent. At one-fourth of the period, 
the graph corresponds to negative 7 on the y-axis. And at 3 fourths of a period, the graph corresponds to y equals negative 1, as shown.